Thank you, Josh. Uh, on behalf of the GFM organization, I'd like to thank the Deep Tech Research uh, Showcase uh, for the opportunity to present our latest developments in the world's world of composite manufacturing. My name's Brad Fair, and I'm the Vice President at American GFM in Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm joined by my colleague, Frank Elliott. Next slide. The GFM organization has an extensive uh, history and experience in the world of composites manufacturing. Our core technologies include ultrasonic cutting, tape laying, and high-speed routing. Uh, a previous slide, please. Uh, we, we leverage this technology to build machine tools for the composites manufacturing uh, world. Uh, we also build extremely large and uh, integrated uh, semi and fully automated systems combining GFM's technology with other processes to provide complete turnkey manufacturing solutions. Next slide. During our collaboration, uh, many collaborations with our customer base and with the increasing use of composites in some of the major aerospace programs uh, and increasing composites and structures, it has become clear that there is a a requirement for a quicker and more repeatable uh, composite repair solution, either from manufacturing or from other types of damage. As you can see, many of the repair processes are manual and very complex and time consuming. Variation from technician to technician is very high. Next slide. Therefore, there is a need for an automated, portable and flex flexible composite repair system as many components cannot simply be brought to the repair depot or repair shop. Next slide. The GFM organization, along with our industry partners, has developed a concept for a portable composite repair system based on previously mentioned collaborations and experience. I will now turn over to my colleague, Frank Elliott, who has basically pushed this initiative, started this initiative in the GFM organization. Next slide, our previous slide. Yeah, Frank. I don't know if, uh, is, is Frank on, Asher or Josh? Let's see, Frank, are you with us? I'm not seeing him. Okay, I'll, I'll continue on then. Um, so this, this slide shows our, our concept. Uh, we've done the initial models and, and, and concepts on the system. The basic, the basic technologies will include our core technologies, but also laser-based surface digita digit digitization, uh, NDI, CNC milling, and ultrasonic cutting for replacement plies. Next slide. Here you see a sequence of scarfing tasks. You know, basically, as you saw on the previous slide, there's a, a lifting device that can place the unit uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the component or the structure, uh, power switched on, uh, we digitize the surface, select a predetermined scarfing program, check the scarfing surface after the uh, scarfing is taking place, uh, and then disconnecting the unit, and then uh, continue on with the repair process that uh, our partners uh, are working on with us. Next slide. So we see the competitive advantages of this uh, based on our experience with our customers. Uh, the, the GFM system is the only system we've seen so far uh, that identifies the damage with NDI processes if required, uh, removes the defective material, completes the repair process, and then verifies that the process is, was properly done uh, to the specifications required. Uh, next slide. Uh, as far as traction, we have uh, in, in standalone cells and, and, and research, we have already proven all the elements of the uh, repair process or the repair requirements through the NDI, through the laser projection of the the identified defects and the actual uh, routing on our, on our standalone uh, machine tools. So we've developed a process already for 
components that can be brought in, in to the repair depot in higher volume. Next slide. Uh, we were, are working with uh, several industry partners. Uh, uh, one of our main uh, big partners is uh, NIAR in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, Aberus Training Resources it has a very extensive experience in uh, composite repair. Field International uh, builds the ground support equipment, which we would utilize with the system. Aligned Vision, uh, providing the laser uh, projection requirements. And, and Zeiss quality uh, for the, uh, the uh, dig digitizing. Next slide. So our ask here is we wanna develop and then build the first prototype to provide demonstrations for potential customers. Um, so uh, wh what we're asking for is uh, 1.6 million to, to, uh, do, to do that. And then uh, our roadmap would be to continue We've had many virtual sessions to promote the uh, uh, technology, uh, one with the US Army, uh, an upcoming one with Navy. And uh, we also have uh, demonstration days here at American GFM to, to demonstrate the various aspects of the composite repair. Uh, next slide. So that's, uh, that's the slides. I'm sorry, uh, Frank was gonna uh, to handle the a part of the presentation, but uh, I, I'm open to any questions you may have. Brad, let me try. Am I on now? You are on now. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sneaky way to get by without having to do it. No, right. I apologize, guys. Um, I, I, I missed a place I needed to, to uh, <laughs> check in. Brad did a great job, and I as kind of the person responsible for these kind of advanced programs with our company without the help uh, that Brad provides us, uh, it would be very, very difficult. So uh, I've appreciated it. He and I both have been with the company over 30 years, him about five years longer than I have. And uh, this is a program that goes back as far as our initial efforts, uh, a couple of decades, and uh, it's finally paying off. So <laughs> any questions now? Great, yeah, I think we had a question from Corey. Uh, yes, sir, just to start the, the, the round of question, and uh, what are the limitations on the types of composites that you're capable of working with? Obviously there's carbons, other, other types of fibers, uh, and the mixes are obviously different for that. How are you handling those changes in the types of uh, composites that things are made of? Over. Typically, uh, what you're talking about as far as different kinds of composites, uh, uh, there, there's not any major issue there because the starting point is to determine the correct machining process to remove the defective or damaged material. Uh, and of course, generally speaking, that can be done with standard uh, machining routing uh, processes. Uh, so then it becomes a question of what type of NDI is required in order to uh, find the area and the depth and so forth of defects in different materials. And while there are certain NDI processes that are pretty good across the board, uh, we have gone with the idea, let's find the best possible process which we did that with the program we had uh, called IRPC and uh, was a, a DOD funded project. So there's, there's really no issue relative to materials. It just will determine what will be the ma machining process to start with and what would be the NDI process that can determine location, size, area of, of defects. Uh, and then uh, going through things, once we have removed the damaged material, uh, we also then provide uh, the capability to create the new material that needs to be replacing it, number of plies and so forth. And beyond that, there is then the cure process, which again, can be affected somewhat 
by what type of material, what type of composite material. In the big picture of the six companies that Brad just showed on the, on the screen there, uh, we have a partner in each of the areas where there needs to be a specialist from NDI to uh, our, our partner in Wichita, Kansas, uh, NIER was excellent in the area of uh, uh, integrating and virtual technology uh, uh, as far as uh, the various types of uh, systems that need to be used. So it's, it, I don't want to say it doesn't make any difference. It does make a lot of difference. We have to know that we deal with it based on what we find the material is. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, it does help. Thank you. 